commission, and I don't even like to use the word commission, call it an investment. Tell yourself, I don't charge a commission, I require an investment of 7%, and here's why. My LPDU determination with my mortgage partnership allows me to have a proper evaluation to make sure that we know if we have an agency or not agency buyer. Not only can it help to keep our deal together, but it help, can help us negotiate more money in the transaction. Because a buyer today who can't get an LPDU finding commitment doesn't mean they can't buy the house, doesn't mean they can. It might mean that they're a riskier buyer. And a riskier buyer means more money for who? Theoretically. My seller, theoretically. And a seller will agree with that. Buyer loves the house and has an issue, they might find it. Who else has a question, dilemma, challenge, difficulty? Hates their office, hates their manager, doesn't want to quit the business. Who got it? Come on, here we go, everybody go. Yes, sir. How do you feel about the LPDU finding commitment? How do you feel about that? When an offer gets submitted and it says in the remarks section of the MLS that all offers must be submitted and approved by the manager? No, by their. By their bank? Personally, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I think that's a great thing to have. Because who do we work for when we have a listing? Remember them? We work for the seller. My job as a professional is to use my resources to do that. So if you guys have some listings right now, I would partner with your mortgage relationship and insert that language in there as well. Yeah? Here's the nice part about that. It's a great question. I feel it may be uh, hurtful to have them approved by somebody else. The word there is reviewed. It doesn't need to be approved. So you can take those findings, and this is one of the benefits of doing business with mortgage partners, and, and, and this is you know, a, a, certainly a plug commercial for the people that are bringing you this morning. You know, Partnerships are all about doing some things that are going to bring a global relationship together, and I would bet to say, and I've never even asked them this question, that if they said to you, if you can get a copy of that LPDU finding, I'm sure one of those loan officers would be happy to review that finding for you and give you their advice and opinion based upon what it means so you can make the proper decisions and, and, and have the proper conversations with your seller. So you don't necessarily have to have another one run. They can be reviewed. And often in the review process, great information can come out as a result of that. So, but that's a great question. You don't want somebody's credit report to continue to get hit with, with, with inquiries. But that being said, it's the information that we want to take a look at. On that same theme, anybody ever do a rental? When you do a rental, what does the tenant need to provide their seller with? Is that as invasive as an LPDU finding? Absolutely. But we take it for temporary landlords all day long. We should do the same thing for our sellers. This is a topic that I hope you leave this afternoon, go up to your people and say, teach me what this means and how I can use it in my business. And you will be able to make money with it this afternoon. But that's a great question. Anybody else have one? Difficulty? Situation? Angry seller? What about a seller who won't reduce the price? Anybody have one of those? Who's got one? Seller refuses. Who's got one? Seller refuses. What do you, what do you say? Let's just wait two more weeks. And are you frustrated at that seller? Who are you really frustrated at? Let's get in touch with your feelings. <laughs> But who is endorsing the fantasy? I guess I am. I guess? Yeah. No, you are. You are! You're like this. <laughs> You're crazy! It's all you! 100%! Because just like Nancy Reagan said, just say no. If a seller, if you view your listing as a partnership relationship, do you see it that way? Do you think that you're investing your time, money, reputation, and responsibility into this opportunity? So you provided that seller with a release. You fired him, is what you're telling me. Oh, I will. I want to. But they just want to keep him there. You got his number now. It's called. <laughs> Hi, I'm part of Quality Control, and I'm here, Mr. Homeowner, to fire you. Immediately, please bring the sign back to the office in all its glory. You can end that situation tomorrow. But again, 
It's that self-induced feeling that I'm working, I got something going on. Or maybe you're a realtor who likes taking listings because you like to use it as a little bit of a trap to get buyers. I say do it. Just be truthful with your seller. Say, listen, lovely home, pavers, sub-zero, granite. You got no shot of selling it at this price. But I can get some buyers from this sucker. I say if you're truthful and you're authentic and you're real, do it. Fire your sellers immediately because every day that you engage in a listing unsold because you're either hoping they're going to get angry enough, desperate enough, what you're forgetting is you are taking a major notch out of your personal reputation. And that you can't get back. And I believe that reputation does matter. And I know that there's a lot of people in this room with a very sterling reputation. Don't compromise it for one. People that care about their reputation will never compromise it. For a track homes of builders, they won't, they won't do it for the wrong price. But you do something, but that's about us. And I like to talk to about the client. Say to your client this statement, the next time he says, absolutely not. Say, Mr. Homeowner, if you are unwilling to reduce the price of your house, I want you to tell you what you're getting for that at no extra charge. What you're getting is what we call reduced negotiating power. And as a real estate professional of the highest order, I will not allow my clients to engage in my partnership relationship and move forward in a reduced negotiating power relationship. What do you mean? Or does it? Every day that you have your house on the market, then it goes unsold, decreases your negotiating strength and increases the negotiating strength for who? The buyer. And one of the other very progressive thought processes I'd like to share with you is that it is old school to begin negotiations at the time that you get an offer. It is old school to begin the negotiation process at the time that you get an offer. The new school the progressive school and the right way of thinking is you can begin contract negotiations the day you take the listing. Negotiate down day one. Say to your seller, I don't waste time with going back and forth, the little honeymoon dance on the dance floor here at the Raven of the Beach. I don't do that. What I do is I negotiate my contracts day one. And the way I negotiate day one is we list it at a price, we position it at a price that takes out all of the negotiations day one. So when a buyer comes along and wants to make an offer, first thing we that's half of the price, we just go back and say, listen, number one, our, our merchandise price is the cheapest one on the market or it's in the lower end of the spectrum. And number two, we already did our negotiations. We've taken all the fat out of the deal day one. You can begin negotiations the day you take the listings. And quite frankly, the top agents in the country will negotiate the listing, negotiate the contract the day they take it. Because they don't want to waste time going back and forth. I mean, it's a, it's a headache going back and forth with a fax machine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can do it. But the other thing is when a buyer wants to buy a house, what's the first question a buyer asks when they're traveling around with you all over the United States? How long has it been on the market? And what was the other one? Will they take an offer? Oh, they'll take an offer. Have they had an offer? Like you know every offer. But the point is it's irrelevant information. The point is, is that you know day one where you want to be with that seller and with the price. So negotiate it right up front. They'll listen to you. They want to. But what happens is when a seller puts up an objection in real estate, as soon as the seller says no, we go, okay. <laughs> we have to be strong. Look them right in the back of the eye. And when you're willing to walk away from a listing because the seller's not willing to partner with you, you know what will happen 50% of the time? They'll come back and go, why are you leaving me? I'm not leaving you. I do not want to have my expectation management part of my service disappoint you. And it's not part of what I do. I'm a professional. And I don't take chances. I work in relationships where there's truth and authenticity from day one. And do you think a seller in this market is going to appreciate that? Absolutely. When every other agent on the sun is giving them something they, they, want, to, they want to hear, tell them the truth. It, it works. There's no secret formula. Who else got one? There's got to be 